Well, welcome again to our study of joy on the book of Philippians. So glad to be with you again. I have a question I'm going to ask you about work. Um, what comes to your mind when you think about work? And more importantly, why in the world do you work? Is it just to pay the bills or to get some needs done? Does it um, fill up your time? Otherwise, life would be kind of boring. Um, is it for enjoyment? Do you actually enjoy working? There's a lot of people who certainly do. Um, maybe it's just another opportunity to get out of the house. Or do you really see work as part of your calling, your vocation from God? It's interesting at the very beginning, uh, work does not have a bad connotation in the Bible. In fact, Adam and Eve were called to work the garden, even when it was perfect before sin came in. Um, although our work gets a lot more frustrating after sin comes in, when thorns start to come and you have to sweat and all the challenges that come with living in a sinful world. Well, today I want to ask you this question. What does work have to do with our faith life? For those of us in the Lutheran tradition, work sometimes, or works, sometimes get a little bit of a negative rap. I think about, um, besides John 3.16, probably the most familiar Bible passage to us is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, where it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, not by works, um, so that none of us can boast. I mean, you think about that, not by works. And you read Paul and you sometimes think, well, he's really negative on the works, knowing that good works cannot save us. And we celebrate that. That's called justification by grace through faith. Now, on this very short passage in Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 12, and we're only going to go through verse 16. You can open up your Bibles to that now. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. Listen to what Paul is telling this congregation that he loves so much, this congregation at Philippi. He says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, that doesn't sound like Paul. That doesn't sound like, for it is by grace you have been saved um, through faith, uh, not of your work so that none of us can boast. No, it sounds like you need to work out your salvation. Get it straight, guy, so that, um, and do it with fear and trembling. Well, we learned. Uh, again, Pastor Landon did such a beautiful job on the Bible study last week. I told you I was a little envious because he takes this early church hymn that says so much about Jesus and what Jesus has done for us from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, where you see very clearly you and I are not mentioned at all. Jesus, Jesus did it all. This incarnation of God who became human came down to earth and he humbled himself, he emptied himself, and took on the form of a servant, even going to a cross. And that one day he has been lifted up and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But at the end of the day, we do nothing. Jesus did it all at the cross. And so what is Paul saying in verse 12 when he says, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Well, first of all, um, to work out. Uh, that word in the Greek really means to complete, to don't stop halfway, to bring it to fulfillment, to, to fill it out. Don't, don't just do it halfway. Um, and then you also need to see what that word salvation really means. Salvation really does talk in, in two terms. Um, sometimes salvation means being justified before God, and other times salvation talks about living in that salvation, knowing that we are justified by God. And that is um, what it's talking about here. A word we often use is sanctification. 
When you think salvation, don't just think about heaven one day when we're free from this veil of tears here on earth. But salvation has to do with a new relationship with God once you weren't God's people and now you are the people of God. It's that new life with God. And when it talks about fear and trembling, it's not like the punishment that a slave is fearful of their master and unjust master going to them, but it's like uh, the fear of a child disappointing their loving parent because they know that their parent cares for them, has sacrificed so much for them, and they would never want to do something that is disappointing to them. You recognize that fear is not what um, uh, about what God will do to us, but it's not wanting to disappoint Him. That's what this is all talking about, this salvation. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And it gets to the question of how in the world are we going to do that? That's not an easy job to do, to live our lives so that we're not disappointing God. Well, it goes on, and you've got to get to verse 13, because verse 13 is where the power to become this person, this witness of God, comes from. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. You see there's a word for it's a powerful word. It says what's coming after it is where the power comes. For it is God who is working in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. You see, that's where the power comes from to live your life as a Christian. It's from God. Paul said it again in Ephesians. He, he started out saying, you're not going to justify yourself by works in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works. None of us can boast. And then in verse 10, he gets to the works. For you and I are God's workmanship. We are created in Jesus Christ to do the good works which he has planned in advance for us. You see, God has a purpose for your life, and He has a purpose for my life. And He's the one who has brought us this life. He's the one who has birthed us by His Holy Spirit. He is the one who helps us to believe. You see, um, there's no way you can lead a good life, that life that's pleasing to God, unless God is working in your life. You see, a person who is hardened, blind, and deaf, as the Bible describes us when we're without Jesus, cannot work out his own salvation. Sorry, you just can't do that. Um, only a person who has been saved can. And the freedom to do good has to be given to us, given to us by God. You see, we can destroy the image of God that image of God in us. Adam and Eve certainly did that, and we continue that family tradition. But you and I cannot restore the image of God. We can destroy it, but we can't restore it. Only Jesus can do that. When we say, I will, doing God's will, that's something that comes from God. When we tell God, I will not, that comes from your and my own sinful choices. It's a lot like a teacher. A teacher can share, a teacher can encourage, but if a student is determined not to learn, they'll never get the benefits of that teacher's teaching. It's like going to a doctor. Um, he can give you all the best medicine. He can tell you all the advice, all the things that you need to do. But if you reject it and don't follow doctor's orders, you're not going to be blessed with that healing. And so I want you to just listen to these words again because they're so beautiful. It says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. You see, your life following Jesus and my life following Jesus is empowered by the Lord. He has a stake in us. He has redeemed us through the cross of Jesus Christ.
and he is busy molding and shaping our lives to look more and more like his, just as St. Paul says in verse 5 of Philippians chapter 2, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Well, Paul kind of circles around to this all and he says, okay, what does the Christian life look like? And I really believe there's five things. And I want you to just kind of count these down because they're all in this text today. As we talk about what does it mean to follow Jesus? And the first one is we, do, we are in a process of growth until we get to heaven. That's why he says, continue to work out your salvation. Uh, work out your salvation. Don't just be satisfied being saved, but continue to work out and to not try to disappoint God, but to live a life that's pleasing to him. Do it with fear and trembling. Recognize that our job is not to please all the people around us. That'll never happen. But with that robe of righteousness that Jesus gives us, you and I are already pleasing to God, and he, we want to not disappoint Him and to work in our lives to recognize that we play to an audience of one, and that's Jesus. He goes on to say, do everything without complaining or arguing. Now, those two words are kind of interesting, again, in the Greek. The first one is complaining, has to do with murmuring. It's like the children of Israel when they're in the wilderness. Even though God was feeding them, they weren't so satisfied with the, with the um, diet the, uh, that he was giving. And so they were murmuring and complaining that was going on. And the word for uh, complaining um, has to do, uh, or arguing, has to do with that idea of um, kind of useless bickering, not really getting down to anything, just being argumentative for the sake of arguing. And Jesus said, that's not how you follow Jesus. Instead, be, as the words say, become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and a depraved generation. What he's talking about there is being authentic, um, being pure, being that idea that you're real and you're not just putting on an air, that whole idea of hypocrisy, but instead you're something that's good. One of those words, um, blameless, has to do with the idea of uh, being pure. You know, back then food wasn't always, could be dangerous to eat because you never knew how, how safe it was. And this is something that is honest and pure in your life. And at the end, and I love this one, and I, boy, if you want to do something for memory today, this is a beautiful memory text. Our brothers and sisters down at Concordia San Antonio, this is kind of the theme of their church. We talk about following Jesus. They talk about shining like stars in the universe as you hold out that word of life. What Paul is saying to you and to me is that part of following Jesus, number five, I talked about progress and growth, about doing it with fear and trembling to please God, not marked with complaining and arguing, but instead being blameless and pure. And this is so that we can shine like stars in the universe as you hold out God's word of life. Paul knew it well, that the greatest prize in life was to know that through him, Paul knew this, that others um, would know and love and serve Jesus Christ. That is our endeavor, our call to be part of God's mission in whatever way we do it, to be part of God's mission and that the greatest prize in life, the greatest work that we can do is helping someone else to know Jesus Christ. Whether that's in our family, whether it's through our words, whether it's in our actions, whether it's with a neighbor, whether it's somebody there at work, 
to be able to share with another person and to hold out that word of life that you and I have in Jesus Christ. That's the greatest work that you and I can do. It doesn't save us, but God is at work as we continue to work out our faith life, as we continue to follow Jesus. And I pray that God will continue to bless you as you seek to hold out that word of life in this community here in Austin. I invite you to pray with me. Jesus, I ask and pray that you just bless our time together today. Um, it's a, just a few verses that we have, but what powerful ones it is. Yes, Lord, we are a work in progress. And you're busy shaping us and molding us by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I just ask and pray that in all that shaping, you will ignite in us all that passion to hold out that word of life as you help us to shine like stars. Yes, we confess we are sinful. But even in the midst of our tarnished star life. You can even use that so that we can shine and show your goodness. Lord, we ask and pray um, for so many who need to know your love, to experience your love, that you would use us. We're not getting better, Lord, in order to just get better for our sake. You already love us. You've already saved us but you have called us to a greater purpose, to a greater work, um, to be your workmanship so that others may see you. May you bless us as we do that in Jesus Christ's most holy name. Amen. Pastor Land will be back with you next week and we'll see you soon. <music>